So this is the first time I've used Zoom, guys. Zoom. Like I've used it, but not like my personal Zoom. I've always <laughs> like, because I've done loads of talks with like colleges and pro teams and everything over the last couple of months. And I'm always like, nah, 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 like you send me a link, send me a link because I don't want to deal with it. So this is the first time I've had to deal with it. And it's actually not bad. It's quite user friendly, David. Yeah. It's not too bad. Okay, so we've got, wow, we've got 70 people already coming in. That's amazing. Have they? You're very popular. That's great. Have you always been this popular? or is No, it never. You found Never. It? Never. <laughs> I'm, I'm excited. I wouldn't know. I don't know about being popular. <laughs> okay, so we've got like 70 something. Uh, so I'll keep, um, I'm going to keep my eye on people coming in and I'll yes. just let everybody in. So, um, yeah. guys, thank you for coming on. Really, really appreciate it. Someone's got a Liverpool Academy background, Alyssa Aldridge. Change your background. Liverpool <laughs> terrible. I'm an Arsenal fan and Liverpool are going to win the league. That is terrible. I'm only kidding. <laughs> I love Mo Salah. So, guys, thanks for coming in. I'm basically going to hand over to, to Pepe. Um, and and again, again, you know, the, the, the whole idea of this call is to give you guys tangible value that you can walk away with today and do something with, right? And it, it's, it's really important to us. And Pepe said this the other day, is that you use the information. And I always refer to fitness programs, right? There's a really famous fitness program called P90X. And it was a best-selling thing. They sold millions of copies of it. And this is back before like downloads, right? So it's like a physical product. And they anticipate, they, they predicted that 95% of the ones they sold stayed on people's shelves and they never actually did it. And I know this is fact because I did that. It was on my shelf for two years. And then my brother came over to visit from England and he made me feel really guilty about paying $200 for something and not using it. So then I actually used it. And then I got fit and it was all a good time after that. So there you go. Okay, so Pepe, we're, <laughs> we're good to go. Um, Perfect. I'm going to keep, if you've got um, questions, ask them in the comments and yes. I'm going to, on the chat, and I'm going to keep an eye on the chat. Okay, so I'm handing this all the way over to Pepe and I'm actually going to hand it over to him right now. Yes, yes. Perfect, David. Well, guys, thank you very much. It's great to see all of you. Finally, I mean... This is, this is amazing. I really appreciate it um, that you're here. And I'm going to do my best to help you as much as possible to build confidence. And uh, I know that this is very important for you because you're here. And uh, I don't want to make this something that's boring. I want to, you to really see this as something that's exciting, that's interesting. And that's, it's a game that we can play. That's what I want to teach you today. Um, and as, as David said, if you have any question, feel free, just write it in the chat. Even if you want to ask me, because I'll open the mic as well, just ask me. Remember that all questions are valid, all of them, all of them. The only bad question is the one that you want to ask, but you don't make. That's the only bad one. Just so, so that you think all of them are accepted and are going to be helpful. And just think about this. I mean, there's... 82 of us right now. Your question, most likely, somebody else has it as well. So if you ask it, you'll also be helping someone else. So let's start. So I'm going to teach you something that's very interesting. So I'm using this whiteboard. So if you can't hear me, just tell me, or if you can't see properly. But this is very, very, very interesting. So what, what happens inside here? Is, is, is fascinating, is fantastic. But it, it, just imagine this, your thoughts are like a pendulum. Do you know what a pendulum is? It's something that go, exactly, that goes back and forth, back and forth. So your thoughts are like that. 
you're going either back in the past or forward into the future. Yes? Has this ever happened to you where you're like, oh, I was like thinking about something in the past or maybe imagining something in the future. Has this ever happened to you? Raise your hand if it has. It happens to me all the time. Yeah. So, Pepe, you can uh, on Zoom. Yes, but it's not the same. If I write on Zoom, I wouldn't be able to do it the same way. So if it happens to you, don't worry. It's very normal. So what happens all the time with our thoughts is that they're going back in the past or in the future, back in the past or in the future. And this is very helpful for us as human beings. It's something that's completely normal. But what we want to do is to learn to train when we want to go in the past and when we want to go in the future. Because if not, your attention is somewhere else and then suddenly you lose the ball or something happens and then you're thinking about it too much that you can't get back into the game. Has that ever happened to you? Yes? I mean, it happened to me many, many times. Yes, exactly. Yes. So this is very important but we, that we can recognize that your thoughts... Yes, our past and future. And yes, sometimes they're in the present, but it's very rare. Even right now, as I'm speaking to you, just try to think, where are my thoughts? Are they entirely here? Or am I also thinking a bit in the past or in the future? Maybe what am I going to eat? You know, you feel you're a bit hungry or a bit tired. So just think about this and pay attention to where you're at. Because as we develop today, I'll be helping you with, okay, how we can train this. But just to tell you something, this is very normal. This is very, very normal. Yes? Any questions so far? Any questions? No? All right. So next thing. If you're writing down or you're taking notes, which would be great, I want you to think about this and write it down. Write down and think about it. It's not my fault. Yes? Repeat after me. It's not my fault. And what do I mean by this? If you feel afraid, if you doubt, if you hesitate, if you're not happy with some of the things that you have or are, maybe it has to do with your height, the way you look, all of these different things, just tell yourself, it's not my fault. If you doubt during a game, if you're afraid, if you say, hey, my confidence is low, just think about this. It's not your fault. It's part of being a human being. It has nothing to do with you. But it's important that you can recognize that we can train this. And why do I say this? Because many times when you feel afraid or when you say, oh, I'm not very confident, Usually we tend to think, oh, there's something wrong with me. What's happening? What, why am I like this? You know, or why can't I do this? Or why, why am I this way? So it's important that you recognize and tell yourself, it's not my fault. Yes? Do you agree with that? Yes. Yeah, perfect. All right, so whenever it happens, just tell yourself, yes, good, Brad. I saw your thumbs up, yes. I think you, we can actually do th thumbs up. There's some reactions. So that makes it a bit more interactive as well. <laughs> so um, after this, so once we recognize it's not our fault, then the question is, what do we do? What do we do now that we're facing challenging situations or that you don't feel uh, confident enough? So we're going to do a little game or a couple of games. But this first game, and it's actually an exercise, I want you to think or write down, those that are writing down, the name of a person that you consider is a winner. It can be a boy or a girl. It can be one, many people. Uh, they can be alive or dead, real or fictitious. The name of a person or people that you would consider winner. Yes? And then next to it, if you're writing it down, think of the, the qualities that this person has. Why do you consider this person a winner? 
why in your mind you consider this person a winner? Yes, what are the, 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 um, the qualities that this person has? Yes, so just to repeat again, the name of a person or several people that you consider a winner. Boy or girl, dead or alive, real or fictitious, and then the reasons why, the qualities of this person. So I'll give you one minute, if that's okay. Yeah, just think about it. There's no wrong response. This is an exercise, but I want you just to think about it. Really pay attention. Yeah? Just give you a, should we say it in the chat? Not yet. Good question. Just wait for it. Because I'll open this. I'll yeah, open the mic. The chat, right? Sorry? You can see the chat, right? I can see the chat. Yes, okay, yes. Perfect. So who's ready? I, I can see. Yeah, Emma, I saw your hand up. Are you there, Emma? Emma? Mate. Should I unmute? Yes, there you are. Yes. How are you, Emma? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing well. Thank you. So would you mind sharing with us the name of this person or several people that you picked that you consider a winner? Um, so I picked a real person and a fictitious person. Okay. So my real person was Alex Morgan. Okay. Because um, who, is, I, who is she? <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. Just kidding. Um, I think she's really successful and talented. Okay. But yeah. I know that she puts in the work and okay. that she is always trying to be better. Okay. All right. So I want you to tell me the qualities, Alex Morgan. Okay. So you said she works hard, right? Yeah. Um, she's talented. Okay. D talented. All right. I'll put it there. What else? She's confident. Confident. Okay. Yeah. And right. she's success, like accomplished. She like accomplished. Kind of her work has paid off. Okay, tell me a bit more about her qualities as a person. Why you consider her uh, a winner? Like, um, what do you see that she does that you would say, "Oh, yeah, that's why I see her as a winner." From what I've seen, like in the media, she is like. It doesn't seem like soccer is like. All, like dominates her life she is able to balance it with other things and i think that is like really important okay so, so she has perspective right yeah okay yes yeah and who's this other person um so i also picked harry potter okay all right and why is that he's a wizard on the ball yes <laughs> yeah <laughs> this he done <laughs> um I picked him just because he never lets anything stop him. He's he's like really okay. always focusing on what he needs to do to yes. accomplish like his goal like in the book. Okay. All right. All right. Something else? Another and policy? this kind of goes along with it, but like he doesn't let like whatever happened like in his past or like he puts what happened behind him and always like works forward and looking for like a new thing that he can focus on. Yeah. Okay. All right. Perfect. Excellent. Excellent, Emma. So pay attention guys to this next question that I'm going to ask Emma. And then this is going to be for all of you guys who here wrote down their name. Raise your hand if you wrote down your name. I can't see anyone. Me. Okay, we have one. All right. Okay, so this is very interesting. I want you to pay attention to this. I ask this question all the time with all the players that I work with. Some of these players have played World Cups, have won all the titles, all the money, everything. And their response is very similar. They think of someone else. So the first thing that we have to do 
is that if we want to win this game, we have to decide what winning means to us and then play based on that. Because what happens many times is that other people have decided what a winner means and then we're trying to fulfill the expectation of someone else instead of what it means to us. So I can assure you, all of you guys have already done at your age things like working hard, that you've put all the effort, that you've, you've bounced back from challenging situations, that you care for the, for the game, that, that this really is important to you. So these are qualities of a winner. So it's important that your definition is something that you decide what it means to you and not to someone else. Because that way, every single time, if you do everything that you can, and that is based on your description, regardless of the final score, you know inside that you are a winner. And this builds confidence. As long as you really fulfill what it means a winner to you. But it's important that you can control this, that you decide on this. If for you a winner is always the final result, let me tell you something. Your confidence will depend on something else, on something that you can't control. And this won't help you. What do you think? Let me ask someone else. Uh, Luke Borg. Hey, Luke, how are you? I'm good. Yes, great. So what do you think about this? Did it make you think something, if you don't mind sharing with us? About which part? About the part of, of deciding what winning means to you. Oh, uh, yeah. I myself don't think I've done a too good job of that in the past. I'm always trying to aspire to be someone I look up to. Yes. Other soccer pros that have come to before me. Yes. So I really, I actually kind of like that. And I look forward to trying to put that into motion. Yes, exactly. And thanks for sharing, Luke. So let's say... Today, today's Friday, tomorrow's Saturday, tomorrow you have practice, you might be doing something. The important thing here is that whatever you're going to do tomorrow, that you say, I'm going to do it at this level of intensity. These are the number of sets and reps that I'm going to do. And when it finishes, I'm going to be better than I started. And that means I am a winner. And then you repeat this every single day. Because as I said, the moment it depends on someone else or the definition of someone else, this is going to affect your confidence a lot. So our definition of winning, of success, has to come from what we believe that is, but that we can also control. So I'm going to ask someone else that I can see here, Bryce Schumacher, I can see you there. Can you see me? Can you hear yeah. me? Yep, I can. What do you think about this? Um, so I think to me personally, um, being a winner can also be um, being kind of, you know, a leader on your team. Okay. Um, you know, therefore, like by example. Yes. Um, and, you know, being able to be someone that, the rest of the team can look at and be like, man, you know, they, they have that winning mentality. Yes. Um, so that's kind of uh, my take on it. Yes. Perfect. Perfect. So that's something, the only thing that I would say, Bryce, is that it's important that that leadership, you start deciding and defining what it is for you. So what, how the, how you express that on a daily basis. But I liked what you said that it's not what you say, it's your actions that really matter. So let's continue. Any questions there so far, guys? Is this helping you? Yes, raise your hand if it is. If it isn't, 
don't raise your hand. <laughs> okay, all right. So remember what I said initially. We're going to make this a game. The more we can see this as a game, the better we will do. Because I remember when I was a player, when I thought of mental toughness or confidence, immediately I was like, oh, this, is, this sounds too serious. This is, this is really challenging. And no, it's just a game. I want you guys to see it like a game, like if you're playing any other game, if it's soccer or any other game. So, ready for the next thing? Ready. Yes? All right, so I'm going to tell you, and as you'll realize, and maybe if you've been listening to the audios, you've already noticed, I like to tell stories. This story that I'm about to tell you is on day eight. So you haven't heard this one yet, but I'm going to tell you this story. This story changed my life. So pay attention. Every time I tell this story, players are like, wow, this really helped me. So I really, really hope it does. It has the same effect on you. So there was once this day, a day that uh, this man, he was a very, very poor man that lived in a farm and he had nothing. He was very, very poor. He had a family, but they didn't have much money. They couldn't have really much to eat, many options. So this was really, really a challenging situation. And his neighbors, other farmers that lived around him, said to him, oh, this is so bad. You have nothing to eat. This is really, really bad for you and your family. And he looked at them and he said, good, bad, who knows? And they're like, how can you say that? You're crazy. This is really, really bad. Can you see? You can't eat. This is not good. You're crazy. So time passed. And then in another village, many, many miles, miles away, there was another farmer with tons of horses. And one night, all of these horses escaped. And they ran and they ran and they ran. They were like going, and they were crossing mountains and everything. This is me doing horses. But they're running, running, running. And eventually one day they decide to stop. And where do you think they decided to stop? They stopped in front of the farm of this poor man. So nobody knew who uh, owned these horses. So now they were his. So ev everyone around him, all the other farm men around him came to him and said, wow, this is so good. All of these horses, now you have them, you can sell them. Now you're rich. This is so, so good. He looked at them and he said, good, bad, who knows? And they were like, oh, how do you say that? Why are you saying that? You're crazy. You're crazy. So time passed and he had several children, but one of them, oh yeah, I know this story. Somebody said, and one of them really liked doing a lot of exercise, just like you guys. And then he decided to jump on a horse and started riding the horse, but then the horse went crazy. So this, the son of this farmer fell and the horse then just tread on him and his knee just broke into pieces. Imagine. And then he couldn't walk. So everyone around the farmer came and said, Oh, this is so bad. The son that you love so much won't be able to walk again. This is so bad. And he looked at them and he said, good, bad, who knows? And they're like, oh, why are you saying that? You're, you're completely crazy. So time passed and then the war came. So all those young men that were healthy went to war, except those that couldn't walk properly. So this son did not go to war. So all the farmers around this farmer said, hey, this is so good. The son that you love so much is not going to go to war. He's going to stay with you. This is so, so good. And what do you think he said to them? Good? Good? Bad. Bad. Who, knows? Who knows? Exactly. Exactly. So this story 
is very important when we're speaking about confidence. Because when we speak about confidence, it has nothing to do with what happens. Is the meaning that we give it that means everything, that will change everything. So the important thing here is how do I use something that is happening to me and I use it in my favor? And I'm going to tell you another analogy. You have a candle and a bonfire. With, with the wind, the candle, what happens to the candle? What happens to the candle, David? Blows out. It blows out. Blows out. But the bonfire, what happens? It grows. It gets stronger. So it's the same thing. We're applying the same thing, wind air but it, they have a different result so in your career as soccer players it's important that if something happens to you you can start thinking and remember what i said of the pendulum where are my thoughts going and is this helping me so we're going to do an exercise that's called what does this mean to me and how does it help me yes so, who wants to do this with me? Jason? Me. Yeah. Me. yeah, I saw you there. Ready. Okay. I'm all ears. So, tell me a, 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 something that happened to you that you said, oh, this was bad or this was negative or something that affected you. Maybe one time when I was riding. So, I, I, I had my old bike and then... Yes. My dad got me a new bike and of course my old bike I would go like full speed because I didn't have like real gears or anything so of course when I got my new bike I went like full speed on it and it was a mountain bike so I didn't it kind of went out of control yes. and I fell and I was like crying because I fell into like a um bush of flowers but it was like thorns and stuff and I was like oh no and then and then my dad, um, I went back to the house and my dad was like, it's okay, you'll be fine. And then he just like put a bandit on my um, knee because it was like all bloody and stuff. And then I was yeah. fine. <laughs> so one thing that happened to you was in a way painful. It was physically painful, right? Mm -hmm. So something hits you, you're like, ow, that, that hit me. <laughs> so how, do, how did that or how do you see this? helps you in the future how does that situation help you and make you stronger let's give it a meaning that helps you say like in when i'm playing a game in soccer and someone um someone hurts me or fouls me and yeah. i'm on the ground i can just get back up and keep playing exactly but what can you say to yourself like okay you hit me oh thank you very much that makes me stronger mm -hmm. now obviously it hurts i'm not saying it doesn't hurt because we're human beings but that that's a good example and and another example would be someone else would say hey because i fell from my bike or somebody hit me then i don't want to play the game because this is so bad but when somebody hits you it could also mean you're very good. And the mm -hmm. only way they can stop you is by fouling you. So mm -hmm. how, what's the meaning that I give it? How does this, what does this mean to me? Is that I'm doing, I'm having a good game. Because the only way they can stop me, stop me is fouling me. Yeah, I, I have like another example. Me and my dad were like watching soccer today. And... We saw this guy and then they were playing and the other team hit the guy with his cleat right in the head and his oh. head and, it, and they'd even can't call it for a red card or yellow card. I was like, huh? And then he was like bleeding from his head. They put, um, they took him off, put like a blue thing around it and a bandaid on top. And then he just went right back in the game. And he kept playing. Mm-hmm. And yeah. he didn't cry or whine or anything like that. So it, and that's a great example. Th thanks, thanks for sharing. Because many things in your soccer careers will happen. 
things that you can't control, things that you don't like. But then ask yourself, what does this mean to me? So I can see Randy Harris. Are you there? Do you want to participate? Do I stay on or do I? Do... Yeah, I'll, I'll participate. Yeah. yeah, now we're going to go to Randy Jason, but thank you very much. Yeah, Randy. Can you hear you me? Are. What? Can so, you hear me? Yeah, we, yeah can. we can hear you loud okay. and clear. So would you mind sharing with us a situation in the game that you would, you would have said, oh, this is bad, this, this didn't help me. Now let's see if we can change the story and the meaning so it helps you. So in the game or just a life experience? We could use both. I think if we keep it in the game, that, that's, okay. uh, we could all relate even more. Um, Maybe when I take corner kicks for my team usually. So maybe when I can't like get a corner down and I keep messing up. Yes. Maybe or just trying to do something and I just can't do it. Yeah. And okay, I know I so can't. You, you you use the word messing up, right? How how old are you, Randy, if you don't mind me asking? I'm I'm fifteen. Okay, fifteen. So you're still very young. So I'm just going to give you this example and you say, I continue messing up. So that's the meaning that you're giving it. So imagine that there's a baby and this baby is learning to walk. Yes. And you can see it like, oh, it's moving, it's moving. And then it stands up and then it falls and then it's crawling and it stands up and it falls. At what point, Randy, do you say to this baby, look at you, you're just messing up all the time. Can not you see that you will never walk? No. Why it's wouldn't you say baby. that to a baby? Because it's just a baby. It needs time to learn, I guess. You just use the words time to learn. So what is the meaning that you could give it? So now that you're taking those corner kicks or free kicks and they're not going the way that you want. If we go from messing up to what could we change it? Time to learn. Exactly. Because you are learning. This is not something that I'm inventing, right, David? No, it's true. Hundred. Yeah, so, so see how the story that we're telling ourselves and the words that we use, how they affect us. So how does that change immediately, how you see it? A uh, uh, whole different perspective. So same situation different meaning because now we're defining something in a way that it helps us you shouldn't care who what other people think because you're like oh i'm in the learning process well i just learned that i shouldn't hit it this way now i'm going to do it this way right just yeah. like the baby you're learning you're learning once the baby learns how to walk what's next how to run. to run. And even us, now we know how to run and we fall. So it's normal if we eventually we don't get things right. Perfect, Randy. Th thanks for participating. Who else? Let's do another exercise and then we will change. Who wants to participate? Me. Malia? Ma Malia, is that right? Yeah, it's Malia. Malia, how are you? Good, how are you? I'm doing great. Okay. So do, I, do I just share like something that happened in soccer that I can change my mentality about? Yes, exactly. What we're doing is what changing the meaning in a way we're saying, what does this mean to me? Okay. Yeah. Um, so last year I worked really hard to get on the first team. And when tryouts came around, I got cut and made the second team. Yes. And my coaches were talking to me about being on the first team, and then they put me on the second team. And I was super surprised and kind of upset and beaten up about it. And then I I played with them for a season and got a little bit better, but it was a really it was a really hard struggle for me. And I was always upset after practice because it wasn't actually practicing; it was reviewing the basics, passing, dribbling, things like that. So I got pretty upset, and now this year, can I share what um what was good about it? What happened? How that changed? 
Yes, yes. Um, so this year now I'm playing with a higher elite team. Yeah. Because, at, because going back to the basics, I learned that I've gotten my technique stronger. Yes. So now I'm able to play with a higher elite team called um, Crossfire. Yes. So, Excellent. Yeah. So, so, so that situation that somebody else would have said, oh, that's so bad. You use that situation to make you stronger, right? Mm -hmm. That's the perfect example. Thank you. Thank you for, for sharing that. And it somebody just else, gave, you see it just gave me drive to work harder and get better. Yes, exactly. So imagine I'm going to do this, 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 I'm going to ask you this question. Imagine that one day you woke up and everything that you wanted to achieve, you could achieve it just with thinking about it. Imagine about that, anything. And if you said, oh, I want to win the World Cup, boom, the World Cup just appears in front of you and you have it. Would you value it? Because I didn't work for it. Yeah, exactly, right? Yeah. So we value things that don't come easily. That's something that's in us. So when, when we find a situation that isn't helping us, that you can think, hey, this is the... This is the interesting part of the movie. Imagine if you're watching a movie, you turn the movie on, you're eating some popcorn, and then suddenly it starts and it says, and they won. That's it. That would be boring, right? You'd be like, what was that? Give me, that's terrible. Because we love the story. So whenever you're facing a situation where you're down on your knees and maybe you're crying and you feel that it's very challenging and you're hurt, remember, this is the interesting part in your story. This is where everything can change. And the question is, what do I do with this? How, what does this mean to me and how does it help me? Yes. What do you think, David? Does this, do you think this, this uh, is helping that. everyone? I love that analogy of watching a movie and they, uh, they got married. End of movie. Yes. <laughs> yeah, all this stuff exactly. happened, but they got married in the end, so it's all good. And, 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 yes. You know, we, we share so many of the same sentiments. You know, I always tell players, like, we, we live in in an age of, of cell phones and instant gratification. And, exactly. You know, it's, it's a lie to some extent, right? Because anything in life, not just football, but anything in life worth achieving is delayed gratification, right? Mm. You, you cannot appreciate anything that comes so easy. Yes. Right? And, and, and this, this goes as far as, you know, getting free gear. Yes. Right? I, guys, I used to play for a soccer team. Who, it was run by uh, an English singer. He's called Robbie Williams. And you can, you can Google him. He's massive throughout the world. He's not big in the US. And what used to happen is that Robbie would, would buy everybody all the stuff. So we'd have... We, it, we looked like a professional soccer team. We had, you know, all the same gear, track suits. We used to get a team bus to games. And this is like a local LA league, right? So we would roll up in this like luxury bus and we would get out and we looked ridiculous. But no one appreciated it because yeah. they, didn't, they didn't invest in it. So, you know, they'd throw their gear on the side and forget it and be like, oh, yeah, I need another one. Because they didn't invest in getting it, they don't appreciate it. And to another extent, it's it's kind of like our training programs, right? Yes. With with our with our app, it's it's costs nineteen ninety nine a month. And when when it was released, it was so many messages. Why isn't it free? Why isn't it free? And it's like because you won't do it. Yes. If it's free, you will not do it. It'll be yet another app that you download and never actually do anything with. So I, I love the fact that, you know, you're repeating the exact same sentiment, that, that the exciting part is in the discovery. Yes. 
right? And and the hard work and and the days that you you get up and you don't want to train and this is when you find out you want it, right? Because you go out and do it anyway. Exactly. Right? And and I feel like that that message is phenomenal. Yes. Yes. And I, I agree entirely with you and that and that um Many of the many of our thoughts that we see that don't help us in a way they're normal, but the question is now that we understand that, what do we do with that? So, when a situation happens and somebody immediately says, "Oh, that's so bad," I would just say, "Stop there for a bit and ask yourself, okay, it's not that it's bad or it's good; it's happening." So the question is. What can I learn from this, and how is this making me better? Those are two key questions. Yeah. So I I, I read something about. Uh, I honestly think failure could show the type of person you are, depending on how you react to it. So yeah, I, I agree. Now, I, I would also add in that let's think of the word failure. So we use the word failure. In so many different ways, but just as the example, which I know is very simple, and maybe you could say a bit eh, with the baby, is that you are in a learning process. Not only because you, most of you are very young, but all of us are learning constantly, learning. So when we make a mistake, that doesn't mean that we failed. When things don't go the way that we expect, that does not mean that we failed. Because whenever we receive something, information, it's always helping us if we want to see it that way. That, that's why I really believe, and if you guys can see it, it's 1% better. Because I've learned in my life that focusing on just being a bit better every single day, even if things didn't go as I expected, that I'm, I'm winning. I'm winning. Could I make this better, this session better? Yes, but I know that I'm a bit better than when I started, and the next day I'll focus just on becoming a bit more better, a better person, a better human being, a better player, a better coach. However, you want to see it, but then this is a never-ending game, which is, it's it's exciting when you wake up and like, yeah, I want to wake up because I I want to be better. Yeah. So I would like to. Make to open this a bit. I know we've gone forty minutes. Hey, we've but, got we've got Zoom Pro. We can go for twenty four hours if you want. Oh, great! I could keep uh, talking. I have a long. couch in my office. I can be asleep here. <laughs> so this is this is open mic for you guys. Um, it'd be great if, questions. If you have some questions, that, yeah, that'd be great. Um, and we can apply it in different in different ways. I know we're speaking a lot about um, just the mental toughness, but if you have a question related to a decision, maybe in your career or something like that, we could address it as well. David has experience. I have a lot of experience uh, advising with many professional players and even players that are going into college and so forth. So, so. Um, I'm here just to help. So fire. Who who wants to ask a question? Yes, this is recorded. Yes, yeah, Savage, this is being recorded. So who wants Thank you. Ask? You're welcome. Who wants to ask a question? Okay, Sarah, I saw you there. Yeah, I yeah, Sarah Sanchez. Oh, it is element of español. Oh, in español. It's only in Spanish. Yes. Um, este, que ahorita pues yo vivía en México y me vine a vivir a Estados Unidos y estoy en un equipo y el problema es que solamente hablan inglés y yo estoy ahí. Entonces, además es un poco difícil comunicarme y tratar de jugar con ellas, cosas así. O sea, ¿no me puedes dar alguna sí. um, recomendación so, o algo? Yeah, so I'm going to translate what she just said. Sara, lo voy a traducir. Sara habla rápido. Yeah, she speaks Spanish. She speaks very uh, rápido, rápido. very fast. But basically she's saying, look, 
I, I admire her because she's saying, I don't speak English and I'm here in the States and my teammates don't speak Spanish and I'm just learning English. So what, what, uh, y voy a traducir en un poco para ti, Sara. What I want us to focus here right now is that the importance that if we might make ourselves vulnerable, that does not mean that we're weak. So she, see how she's like, yeah, I'll speak. Nobody speaks Spanish. You know, it's difficult. But she's like, hey, I don't know this. But she's not seeing it as a weakness. And that's very important that we can recognize that and that she's being open in a forum where everybody is speaking English. I, I feel like that, that is, it's not only vulnerable, but it's also brave, right? Now, yes, exactly. Dada, you need to know um, blah, 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 una palabra. One word. Aquí. Una palabra. Yeah. Aquí, aquí. Aliente. Okay. <laughs> you need. Because I used to play, Pepe, you might want to translate because I can't do all of this. Yes. But I used to play for a Mexican team in LA and I spoke no Espanol. Like now, habla poco. But then, nothing. And all I used to say to my teammates was, aquí, aquí. And they knew. Because soccer is global language. Yes, right? exactly. It's a global language. Sara, el, el fútbol es, es un lenguaje internacional. Lo que yo te sugiero es que cada día aprendas una palabra relacionada al fútbol y que la okay. empieces a aplicar. Cada día una palabra y que entonces la empieces a practicar. Al final de una semana puedes tener siete o diez palabras y esas palabras pueden ser más que suficientes para que puedas darte a entender. Ok, este, también tengo otra pregunta, una experiencia que me ha pasado y sí he tenido muchos problemas con eso. Es de que en mis equipos pasados, pues de que yo estoy en un partido normal y de nada empiezo a perder la pelota o que me quitan la pelota o doy un mal pase y me siento muy presionada porque no sé qué los entrenadores me están diciendo. ¿Es que estás perdiendo la pelota? ¿Qué estás haciendo? O me empiezan a decir cosas, o los papás, o tienes presión de tus compañeros, cosas así, entonces me siento, y, y yo digo en mi mente, tú puedes, tú puedes, pero lo único que estoy diciendo es más, eh, arruinarlo más, y yo como, ¿qué yeah. hago? No sé. So, so, I'm going to translate this question, Sara, lo voy a traducir, lo voy a explicar, y te lo explico también a ti. So, this is a very typical situation, Sari is saying, look, something that's happening to me a lot is that, I get the ball, I lo lose the ball, coaches start shouting at me, say, come on, Sari, you can do it. She keeps messing up and then she feels a lot of pressure and she's like, how can I change this? Now, has this ever happened to you guys, ever? Yes. Oh, I would say yes. it oh. happens to most of us. Sari, nos pasa a la mayoría de nosotros. So, How can we work on this? So this, this goes again to the same example. So we have two, two different voices. We have the external voice and the internal voice. So the external voice is the voice of the coach. The coach is saying something, right? And he could be saying or she could be saying whatever it is. And I have my internal voice. So... Same situation. When something is happening, the question is, how does, what does this mean to me and how does this help me? So imagine if the coach is shout, yelling at you. Usually it's like, oh no, this is happening again. But you could change the story. How could we change this story? Who wants to participate? Um, Alexa, Muth, are you there? Yes. Yeah, um, so, yeah. so I think we could change it by maybe taking it as the coach wants to help you instead of, oh, he, like, he or she keeps putting me down. I think instead you should take it as like a positive thing. It's like, hey, I know he or she wants me to do better. That's why they're making these comments. Yes, exactly. Yeah, so the coach cares. Most likely they care for you. They care for the well-being of the team. They care. But sometimes they care so much that they don't know exactly how to communicate, which I understand. Mm -hmm. So if I say to myself, look, the coach cares. He just wants to help me. But do you know what? Just like the fire 
and the, the candle, this is going to make me stronger. I enjoy it when, imagine if you said to yourself, I enjoy it when they start shouting at me because that means that I'm participating in the game. I'm getting the ball. They know I can do it a bit better. So I'm changing already the meaning. Sarai, I'll just say it quickly in Spanish. Sarai, lo que les estaba diciendo es que puedas cambiar la, la historia del entrenador. Si el entrenador te está diciendo algo y es una voz externa, tú tienes tu voz interna. Y esa voz externa, si él te está diciendo algo, es porque le importa. Le importa que lo hagas bien, le importa que le vaya bien al equipo. Entonces, que tú misma puedes decir, ah, es que esto era justo lo que necesitaba para despertar. Así como una vela y una fogata. El aire apaga la vela. El aire hace más fuerte a la fogata. ¿Cuál de los dos eres? Y que puedas entender que esto lo puedes entrenar. Okay. So, the last, the, the, the thing that I would add to that, guys, is that we need to understand that this is something that we train. Not only because we have the information means that we can do it immediately. This is not a magic pill. This is not immediate. Having information does not mean that I understand it. In order to really understand it, I have to apply it. So in order to apply it, we have to live it. So once you're living it, you start getting better at it because you, you're practicing. Just like you're practicing with the ball, it gets better by the time. Initially, you find it hard, but then it gets a bit better, a bit better. So if it happens to you that after this, you're like, oh, oh, this, this is, I, I learned this with Pepe and David, and now it's not helping me, just remind yourself. You're learning. And in the learning process, it's not an immediate thing. Having the information with this is not enough. It takes time. Yeah, like, Pepe, I think, you know, again, like going back to society and the way it is now, everybody is looking for that magic pill. Yes. You know, like, with me, I would, I would love, I would love a magic pill so that I could speak Spanish like Sarah speaking Spanish. Yes. And it is... It is such a slow process for me to learn Spanish. And I, I live with a Mexican. And yes. it's still so slow for me to learn Spanish. And some days I get down on myself, you know, because I'm like, I, I listen to my friend Juan speaking and, you know, it's, it's probably quite inappropriate because I, I listen to his phone calls all the time because yes. I want to see like what I can pick up from him speaking. And some days I haven't got a clue what he's saying. And yeah. then other days I'm like, I can string it together and I'll say, oh, you were saying this and that. And he's like, yeah. yeah. And it's the same thing, right, with, with soccer and stuff. And, you know, mental training isn't taken anywhere as near as seriously as it should be. Because yes. it is an absolute game changer. And you know it, and especially at the top level, the, the very, very, very top level, there isn't that much difference. Technically. No, no, no. Yeah. And, you know, it's so important for you guys to understand it that, you know, if you, you know, when we get back from COVID and, and you guys put this into practice, if you haven't started to practice it now, it's not going to work straight away. You know, yes. it's, it's not. And, you know, when it doesn't work the first time, don't think it doesn't work. It does work. You've just got to keep doing it and keep doing it. Like if, if I, if I, if I, if I, try to speak Spanish, but I'm, I'm very fortunate where I don't care about making a fool out of myself speaking Spanish. Yes. But I, I'll go to Mexico and I can be saying the completely wrong thing or grammatically it's terrible, yes. but I'm trying and people respond to you trying. Yes, exactly. And, and it, it's yes. the same in football is like, If you keep trying it, eventually, eventually, guess what's going to happen? I'm going to have a full-on conversation. Yeah. Afterward, I'm going to be like, I just had a conversation. Yes. Right? And it's, it's exactly the same thing. Exactly. Yes. Yes. And, and, and what I would say to you guys as well is that you need to see this like you are, and, and if you've been listening to the audios, I say this, you are a scientist the guinea pig and you're the laboratory so your role in this is that you start applying all of these things 
And every single day you just apply and say, oh, this helped me a bit more. This story helped me a bit more. Oh, now I see it in a different way. And that you are just patient with it. This is something that it will take you your whole life because that's part of it. That's the interesting thing. If you remember, I said, it's seeing it again. If somebody says to me, let's say, no, I, I am speaking to them. I want to work with you. I get a negative, let's say, uh, response. I'm like, ah, I needed that. Thank you. I'm like, okay, this is making me better because not everything will go the way that we want. And that makes it exciting. Um, we have other questions, uh, David. Do you want to moderate the questions yeah. or? Well, Devon said, is there anything that you or I use to really kickstart your career? Like something someone said to you or something, someone did really anything. So, you know, if everyone really wants to make it a pro and you look up to it, is there anything? Yeah, so with, with me and, and my business, um, everyone told me I couldn't. Yes. Um, and, you know, what people, what people don't know about me is that I'm actually very introverted. Mm. Right? Like for me to get on these calls is quite a big deal for me to do because I'm actually very, I'm an introverted extrovert. When I need to be outgoing, I can turn it on, but it's exhausting. Um, so this is why I love doing one-on-one -on -one training because I can put all my energy into it and, and I get a lot of results. So when I started the business in 2010, 2011, yeah. all of my friends were like, well, you can't do that. This is just what soccer coaches do on the side. I can't do that. You can't do that. And I was like, well, golf, you have trainers, tennis, you know, like yes. basketball, why not? And they're like, you, it's just not done. So when people tell me I can't do something, you know, I'm not, I'm not bullheaded. I'm like, yes, I can, you know, but I look at it and think, well, they're wrong. I can do this. And it just drove me on and on and on and on. Yes. And, and honestly, Devin, I saw the results in my players and that spurred me on as well. Now, you know, if you want to play at the pro level, you know, Pepe will tell you and I will tell you, it's hard. Yes. You have got to dedicate your life to football. And that is a big decision because it is not for everybody. Right? Dedicating your life to, to this game is hard work. And, yes. you know, if you want to make it, then you've got to be prepared to work. Yes. Yes. So somebody asked if this, this goes past five Maybe. So we're close to an hour. So we'll, we'll, uh, we'll finish once you, you tell me, David. But so with that question, guys, I would suggest that you think this way because a lot of players are thinking of becoming professionals or they want to become professionals. So when do you become a professional player? Think about this. When do you become a professional player? When... When you sign a contract or when you start living like one? So a professional player, a professional player is a player when you decide to start living like one, when you start practicing like one, when you start sleeping like one, when you start eating like one, when you start thinking, all of these different things, that's when you become a professional player because you're in that path. Because signing or not a contract has nothing to do with being a professional player. I know a lot of players that have signed great contracts and they're not professionals. They're amateurs that make a lot of money. So that's, that's the first thing that I suggest that you think. But the that's second brilliant. one... That is brilliant. The second thing that I would suggest that you think is that if you're seeking to become a professional player, that doesn't depend on you. That depends on someone else. Once again, in my opinion, you should be seeking to become the, better, the best player you can be. Because if you do that, the chances of you reaching your goal will be higher. And how can you do that? And sorry if I go back to this, is that every single day you can focus on becoming and being a bit better than yesterday, than in the morning. 
that is the key for these players that you see that they stay like Cristiano Ronaldo, whoever you want to think of. They're always focusing on how can I be a bit better, a bit better than yesterday. It was never about just signing the contract. It was never about that. Obviously, it's a benefit, but they're always focused on that instead of the idea or the illusion of signing a contract and taking a picture and uploading to social media and receiving this recognition. It's not about that. It really is about internal. When you decide it based on your own things, I can assure you the outcome will change and it will help you. All right, Pepe, I think we'll, we'll wrap it up. Um, but guys, we're going to do this again on Monday. So if you've already registered for the 10 day challenge, you'll get an email from Pepe. Yeah. Um, and if you haven't, please sign up. Um, it's 6 p.m. sports.com forward slash 10 days. Yes. Right. Um, and it's important that you follow that program along. Um, if you haven't signed up, you'll still get an email from me on Monday. But what we're doing is that everybody who signed up will get an email from Pepe first so that you guys get first dibs on getting into the yeah. room because there's only a hundred people. Yes. Um, I want to thank Pepe, uh, Gracias Sera, you know, <laughs> you coming on without speaking um, fluent English is fantastic and it's very brave. Um, you're awesome. So Pepe, if you Can wanna... I just add something, David? Yeah, of course. Before we finish, because I, I see that other people are asking questions. Yeah, please, feel free to send me a message or David. So within the program that you're doing, there should be a place where you can contact us. I'm sure about that. If not, you can send me an email directly or via um, Instagram. I'll put, I'll write down uh, my email. Let me just uh, do that. Or if not, I'll send it in an email as well to all of you guys, but send me the questions. I'm more than happy to answer them. And remember, just like with any skill that David teaches you, there's so many different skills. Today, we train the skill of observing and stories that we're telling ourselves. There are many, many more things that we can do. So feel free to ask questions. And my goal is to continue to help you uh, improve your performance as a player. Okay, brilliant. Guys, thank you so much. We will speak to you all on uh, Monday. Keep working hard at this program. You've all been awesome. Thank you very much. Gracias. Thank you. Great job. Thank you. 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 Thank you.